welcome back students for the second session for module 2 so last class we did discuss about the basics of floor planning what are the considerations what is congestion channel definition and we were at slicing floor plan why uh, the floor plan has to be slicing type i was around this particular uh, uh, slide where i told you like when you have a slicing floor plan we can represent the entire flo floor plan uh, by an equation called as polished expression so if you look at this particular expression i will get back to this particular expression how to write and how to read it okay moving back to the slicing floor plan see the when it is a slicing type so using a single cut either horizontal cut or using a vertical cut you can partition the entire floor, floor, floor plan into two parts need not be the equal parts okay so if you look at this b example by a vertical cut i can partition it but if you look at the a example this is called as a non slicing type with a single cut i cannot partition and if you look at something like this like cyclic information right this has got a cyclic constraints also it is non slicing type and whenever there is a cyclic kind of partitions you know we call it as a cyclic constraints it has got a cycle cyclic constraint also what happens when we have such type of floor planning in the consideration what happens now this is a cyclic type if i want to convert it to a perfect uh, you know slicing type okay i have to increase the height of the chip something like this where uh, you know so i increase this further so that i can slice this what will happen the entire chip area will increase so it is always better to have slicing type of floor plan where you know you have have an op, uh, you know option to reduce the you know size of the chip and you know routing information is so clear if it is a slicing type see you will have a channel somewhere here you will have a channel here you will have a channel here so you are using horizontal tracks and vertical tracks to route them see basic uh, type of routing will have at least two layers of metals metal 1 and metal 2 but it is not the practical case okay will have multi layer metal like m1 m2 m3 so if you want there won't be any connections bit connection between m1 and m2 if you want to make a connection between m1 layer and the m2 layer there will be a wires design that wire will be is a contact basically it just to connect metal one layer to a metal two layer or any metal layers okay between any metal layers so any metal layers adalli katta aitu alli katta aitu aste next nanu so would you uh, so it's always better to have uh, the floor plan to be slicing type see this is there is a no, non slicing uh, floor plan if you look at this particular example you have a a module here and c module here and it's uh, is completely non slicing type so that you know routing congestion is very common in such cases so to avoid that they had to merge a and c modules together and convert the entire floor floor plan from non slicing to a slicing type and they had to do the routing okay so how to read this see always start from the left side this is the slicing tree so what comes first from floor plan you can write a slicing tree or from the slicing tree also you can write the floor plan okay it is always from the left it's 1 6 that is partitioned by a what horizontal cut so h will come then 2 v will come 
is a left side right side top ok 1 6 h 2 v 7 5 v then a h 2 v 7 5 v then a h the other part 3 5 h then a v everywhere it starts from the left leaf and the right one ok this is how we write a polished expression say suppose some <coughs> element in the polished expression changes say instead of writing 1 6 if I write 6 1 what will happen in the floor plan 1 will sit here and 6 will come here that's that's a thing so just by changing this polished expression I can observe that there is a change in the floor plan as well ok so slicing floor plan it is very easy to handle then you change the polish expression the accordingly floor plan is going to change so according to this particular floor plan if you look uh, polish expression if you look at if i read the floor plan 16h yes 16h then you'll have one more horizontal curve 16h then you'll have one more horizontal curve then you'll have one more horizontal curve that separates 7 and 5 correct horizontal cut that separates 6 with the you know 7 and ok repeat sir if you look at this particular example how the floor plan is done it is 1 6 h so that h means what it is horizontal cut so you have 1 you have 6 correct so now the next one is 2 v so this horizontal cut is once I mean part is separated by a vertical cut that is V and you have another block called 2 is a block it is not exactly the block it is a region ok it is a routing region in this particular routing region you can have multiple blocks also the entire floor planning uh, slicing does not mean that each block what you can see in the floor plan will have only one block it can have multiple it is a routing uh, sorry floor plan region. So, this is how you can read. So, now how to optimize the floor plan? See one example, let me give you. There is a rule, okay. So, you have the same uh, polish expression. There are three moves applied for a polish expression. So, before introducing those moves, let me tell you the block area 1 and 6, they are called as operands. Block areas are operands. Okay. So, three types of moves will have involvement of opponent and it will even have an operator. So, either H or V are called as operator for that particular move. So, H and V cuts are the operators and the block uh, I mean partitioned blocks are like you know operands. M1 move 1 operand swap swap adjacent operands swap adjacent operand is very simple right I can swap 6 1 I can swap 5 3 floor plan automatically changes the second move is the chain in what complement the chain that means wherever the H was present you make it V wherever V was present you make it H the third one operator operand swap that means what say 6 is replaced by H, H is replaced by 6. You just change that. Once again the floor plan is going to change. So, by applying all these three types of moves like one initial example is given. Say example is uh, this particular example slicing floor plan is given. The polish expression is 12V, 4H, 3V. Move 1 is applied. What does it say? have a swap between op operands right 1 2 v 3 h c 3 and h they are interchange so only you can see for the, for the same example you can see some changes and it is not like at every position you have to apply the move one at a lot some locations you can apply move one or entire chip all, i mean entire floor plan also you can apply move one the second one move two accordingly you can check the floor plan is changed then the move 3 once again the floor plan is checked so look at the initial floor plan where this was the vacant space and this was the vacant space now look at it after applying 3 moves you 
completely eliminated her the open space. This is the advantage. Then comes to IO input output and the power planning instead of uh, you know theoretically taking this let us look at the diagram how it appears. Now, this is a die correct it has got a core it has got a IO region. So, this is what is the this region is called as a IO region. There are few terminologies with respect to C IO region. Here, the IO region is very dense, core region is not that much, or IO is very you know complicated, but core is not that much. So, it is called as a uh, you know pad limited die, that means it is only, I mean, the major focus is given only to pad, not to the core. The second one, if you look at the core region is more compared to the pad region, then it is called as a you know core limited die and the compromise now you have a option for core and the pad equal contribution then pad related and core related die. So, let us read through the terminologies in the pad uh, you will have a corner ring ok. This particular ring is called as a pad ring you have a core and the corner most cell it is actually the IO is a corner pad, corner pad ok. It is IO circuit only at the corner. Then in the IO there are rooms for routing VDD and VSS that is also given. VSS out VDD to core, VDD to core. So, it can have multiple ground reference. IO power pad, IO pads, the IO circuit everything is put together you will have a IO pad. So, and core anyways is a logic blocks. Then uh, you can even you know concentrate on the power planning as well with respect to IO planning. So, if you zoom only one part of it, let me take only this part, it appears to be you know VDD for core because it is inside right. This is VDD for core, VSS for the core, VSS for the pad ring, VDD for the pad ring, then what it has got pad limited IO pad that means so, this is the pad limited uh, IO pad, I have already explained what is pad limited IO pad. Then the connections, see on the top if you see it will you know it will be visualized something like this. You have a chip core and these are all the you know IO connections that is uh, you know we call it as on grid pads the entire chip you know it is intersection uh, it is uh, you know it is not partition basically you will have a grid structure to command over the chip area ok. On the grid structure only you are placing it is only for the reference placing a logic block, but wherever the connectivity comes that is represented on the grid structure that is represented somewhere here. Once again it is a uh, uh, particular example cell based uh, ASICs. For the cell based ASICs as you know like gate array or standard cell based ASICs you know for everything the routing is different. Even how they take connectivity is different for cell based it, standard cells it is different we could take a connectivity through a uh, feed through and for gate array based uh, you know routing also it is different that is you know uh, differently shown here this is for the cell based design that is uh, standard cell based design this is for the gate array based design. And the power planning you can see uh, in between like every logic block requires power VDD and ground right all need not to have a uh, need not have a common reference VDD. Now, in the modern chip the VDD there are multiple VDDs present one part of the chip operating in one reference you know voltage and another part of the chip is operating in another 
reference voltage this is possible but in this particular case uh, we have taken only one vdd as a reference so uh, for the routing as i told you before in the channel region one particular line is dedicated for vdd another particular line is dedicated for vss how it is routed now i will take it in a horizontal channel you will have a line of power i mean a particular track that is dedicated for a power line okay so for the power line also it will run in you know horizontal track then it will shift to vertical track so you will have two metal layers at least so whenever you want to connect make a connections you have to go for a wire see look at here so through the wire connections you can perform the uh, routing of power line see there is no difference in like routing of uh, you know signal line and uh, the power line when it is a metal lines are uh, you know concerned but we handle power line separately because there is some uh, you know topology required for the power line or the clock line and for signal routing it's a interconnections like you estimate the wire length etc there is a different story for uh, you know signal line that's why we are showing power line separate then the clock line separate etc okay now we will go to the clock part of it so similar to power clock is again very very important aspect so i have introduced about the oscillator where to place the oscillator why to place the oscillator at the center you have to avoid clock skew this one example like you have a d flip flop say it takes a input say let me take this as a first d flip flop let it be a d1 that's why the input name given as d1 okay so this is the second flip flop with the input name d2 in between you have some combinational logic okay the d1 is operating at the positive edge of the clock and d2 is operating at the negative edge of the clock See, this is not the master slave configuration or something okay this is how typically you know clock uh, are sequenced clock signals are sequenced it, this is a sequencing method this is the first clock i mean i mean uh, clock reference there is another clock called clock bar they are not exactly complementing each other that's why i said you, you don't take this as uh, you know a uh, master slave configuration or something uh, this is uh, two different reference clock signals that's it so this is clock bar since it is a uh, uh, d flip flop if you want to take any value at d d should be held constant pr to the positive edge of a clock okay that pr time is called as a setup time so this will be held constant prior to the appearance of clock edge for the setup time duration after the clock edge also signal should be constant for some more duration and that duration is called as a hold time okay d1 reaches the value and done q1 with the particular delay so this is the amount of delay uh, i mean propagation delay this is what is called as uh, d to q delay it's a data is a clock to q delay okay we call this as with respect to clock edge right clock to q delay with some clock to q delay q1 is producing the output now d2 can or should be ready with the data at flip flop 2 prior to the clock edge so it is ready with its data because this combination logic is converting the value of d2 and it i mean it is processing and it is producing the value somewhere here and the data is held ready prior to the existence of or the positive edge at clock bar so that covers the setup time now obviously d2 reaches the value now what is the point here is like if you look at the time at which d1 receives the clock and the time at which d2 receives the clock they are not exactly complement okay 
they are the uh, clock one uh, clock bar is the delayed version of clock so that delay is called as a clock skew so difference in the arrival time of the clock at every logic block is known as a clock skew why clock routing is very important i have to reduce such skews let me see uh, give you the example like how we can reduce now look at this a uh, typical clock routing topology and i did mention about this uh, you know grid so with respect to grid model because when you have a grid model it is easy for us to estimate the uh, wire length or a clock net length etc okay clock enters to the chip say from this particular location please calculate the distance of clock distance covered with respect to each cell okay say imagine each cell is having a height of 1 and a width of 1 it's a unit square cell okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so it will take exactly 7 some unit time to reach out to at p2 if you look at at p1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 6 7 it is taking again 7 if you look at at p3 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that means what at p2 p1 p4 p3 at every tapping point it is taking exactly 7 units of delay that means what clock arrival time to all these tapping points are equal there is absolutely no clock skew that means zero clock skew topology right so this will happen only in such cases where you know tap uh, clocking uh, i mean tapping point is so symmetric that you can organize them so perfectly so this uh, this type of organization is called as h tree based clock routing h tree based this is a topology okay but clock tapping points could be this also let us be more practical it could be this also it need not be symmetric right if they are not symmetric we will find alternative methods na yellow murtta idu ninge olle kirikiri aitu but clock need not be symmetric right you can have all these points like where you cannot actually relate it to a h type of shape at all so there could be let us be more practical there could be this then you have to find some alternative method to uh, you know interconnect all these clock tapping points so that the clock skew is minimum i cannot assure clock skew is zero so if you look at this distance from say this is a, clock entry point distance from this to this particular point is may not be equal to this particular point but skew should be minimum all these we have to work out during floor planning that's why this is introduced and even for power planning also we'll have such topologies so this is uh, one of the examples uh, in the you know uh, chip area like how to avoid the skew so that you know all the arrangement but the, if you i look at the tapping points they doesn't appears to be you know symmetric so since they are not symmetric clock skew is minimum but not zero the same example however i have uh, given in the previous case how to calculate uh, clock skew is given in this particular way form and how to estimate whether clock skew exist or not it is a delay right so you have to perform a delay analysis so once again elmore's delay constant or uh, delay model elmore's delay model comes into uh, you know picture based on elmore's delay model we can even estimate what is the total delay so based on which i can say what is total skew okay this is a description about the figure itself so now what they do is like there is something called a clock buffering 
so clock buffering is introduced so that you know uh, there is uh, uh, wherever it has to be delayed wherever it is arriving fast okay uh, clock is arriving fast you delay it a bit so that you know every uh, tapping point receives the clock at the same time this is called as a uh, you know clock buffering buffer means what inverters right i mean two inverters means one buffer so let us uh, now start with uh, the placement see there is uh, if you look at uh, the main agenda of floor planning and the placement they are almost the same placement is also try to, tries to find a location for a block but the scenario is different now you have already worked out in the floor planning what and all to be considered now uh, you know design is half ready then what else to be done so when it is a place placement say you in the chip area within every block where exactly all the logic modules to be placed i can assess through, through the placement okay then i i have already assessed how to route but exact estimation i can do during placement so rather i can say the placement of flexible blocks are called as uh, floor planning and placement of a fixed blocks are called as uh, you know placement actual placement because uh, when it comes to the uh, placement it is from the floor planning it comes like shape will be uh, you know so far flexible that will be converted into fixed at the stage of uh, placement during floor planning if once again to differentiate details like shape of the block i o pin position etc will not be known but when it comes to placement the shapes i o pin positioning everything will be known okay see in the uh, uh, you know if standard cell placement you standard cell based design in the standard cell everything is pre characterized so you will not have any room to you know alter the shape of the block etc etc right so there actually there is no floor planning actually uh, floor planning placement both are almost the same so input to the placement problem you have a set of block with well defined shapes floor planning is over you know the shape pin locations are all fixed netlist is given netlist is must because you know at every stage interconnect information should not be changed then uh, when you have all these ready what are the objectives to go for placement because i have already considered all these parameters majority of parameters have already considered during floor planning i have to further reduce the area of a chip so minimize the area then the reduce the net length of a critical net okay i have to reduce the area of a chip i have to reduce the path length we have whether it is possible to reduce it further that i have to check so here allotting the location is not the mandatory thing okay it's already done now i have to reduce the entire area and i have to you know reduce the wire length also so the goal of the placement tool is to arrange logic cells within the flexible blocks of a chip in one single block you have all the logic cells i have to arrange it will guarantee the router that you can complete the router within the specified area and it will reduce the delay in the critical length and it will make the chip so dense so that there is no vacant space left that means it has reduced the chip area to the minimum possible area it can have few additional uh, you know constraints like i want to reduce the crosstalk i believe you understand what is crosstalk if two signals are carrying uh, you know signals which are placed adjacent, adjacent to each other say for example this one line one is carrying logic one signal and uh, it is switching uh, switching from logic 0 to say logic 1 and line 2 is ha ideally having zero value and it is not changing it's in idle condition 
So, when it is under ideal condi condition and the line 1 is switching from 0 to 1, this switching can introduce some you know spike into the second line that will be misinterpreted as a value. Okay? That is called as a uh, crosstalk. We say it is a coupling of charge from one line to another that I can uh, keep as a criteria or I want to reduce the power dissipation that also I can keep as a criteria. It is not like I have to go only for wire length, but I we should be idealistic so that you know there will be certain outcome for the conditions because you cannot run a flow uh, placement only for reducing crosstalk that is not possible. Okay. Okay. Few constraints once again. Uh, minimize the estimated interconnect length, timing requirement of critical length, minimize the interconnect congestion. So, this I we can consider during the uh, placement. When it comes to placement, like how to do placement, floor planning is over. Even for floor planning also, there is no manual floor planning, planning like I cannot uh, say suggest that okay, I will put this particular block here everything is commanded by a software or a tool. EDA tool I uh, already introduced electronic design automation tool. In this tool we will have set of algorithms. These algorithms will control the operation of floor planning, operation of placement. So, how to develop such algorithm? So, for a placement there are two types of category constructive algorithm and iterative algor uh, uh, you know algorithm. Constructive algorithm how it operates is like you will have a method, you will have a mathematical model or a method. It is like one time one single solution okay this is how I have to place. The second one is iterative type, I do not have a exact method, but I will get into some solution. That solution I will try to improve iteration by iteration. In the constructive case, I have single mathematical model and I have the uh, my answer ready. Okay? Therefore, further I cannot optimize it. But in the iterative method, I have scope for optimization like over the iteration. I can have probabilistic based iterative methods also, deterministic based uh, iterative methods also. Okay? But constructives are like mathematical based. So, one of the constructive uh, methods is a min cut algorithm. Min cut is what? Minimum cut. The you have a chip area, entire chip area is you know partitioned into sub blocks. So, that in every sub block uh, you can place either one logic block or multiple logic block. Okay? Now, this particular min cut algorithm is an idea like when, when you have to actually partition because floor planning is already given you in this particular region I have a block, in this particular region I have a block. Now, how well I can partition so that I already have a floor plan and when I put these two blocks into say one single location there is no interconnection being cut. Okay? If these two blocks are separated by a cut, there will be some interconnection, interconnect information being cut by this process. right? So, that is why when you are going for partitioning of entire chip area for a placement, we have to see that there should be minimum number of interconnects between the block to be cut due to the partition. That uh, objective is called as min cut objective. So, algorithm following such objective is called as a min cut algorithm. So, one of the you know min cut algorithm uh, which is uh, say application of partitioning which is given by Breer, he has suggested four ways of you know how to partitioning entire chip area. What it does? It is the first cut. Where is the second cut? Is here. So, initially it is having only one partition. Then the third cut is here, you will have a second. Then goes the fourth cut here. Then what you will have? Okay. It is a first one, you have single one, next one, the next one, the next one you have here. So, you go on to following this process. So, next uh, partition number 5 will come somewhere here and 6 
goes here and the 7 goes somewhere here. This is how you continue. The second one is a complete bisection. One go you bisect horizontally and vertically. So, you have 4 partitions together. Then each of these 4 partitions together you bisect horizontally and vertically. Job is done. But this may not be uh, the best way of partitioning because following minimum uh, min cut objective is very difficult in this particular case because uh, you always look for a bisection and in the bisection guaranteeing uh, you know the minimum number of interconnects being cut is very very difficult. The next one is a slight modification is a mixture ok. You have a bisection horizontally you complete every bisection horizontally first ok. Then you go for vertical ok to certain extent compared to so B could be uh, you know uh, taking us to the min cut one. The next one this we call as a slice bisection horizontally it is sliced. When I say slice there is a difference ok bisection means equal parts when it is sliced need not be equal part. So, much better right ok taking us close to minimum cut vertically bisected I have even kept the essence of bisection. So, what is best fitting for that particular application that will be I can take these are the four ways in which Greer has suggested we can do min cut partitioning ok. So, this is an example of uh, min cut. So, this is there are blocks every partition we can even call as a bin partitioning uh, partition is a well known name. So, we can use a terminology called bin also for the partition ok. So, when you have partition look at this there are two interconnects being cut because I am separating them when it is being cut means what means they are not physically cut see uh, the block you know under bin a 1 block block v and w will sit and in under b a 2 x z y are going to sit. So, they are not within a bin they are separated. So, when they are separated the interconnects has to be you know external between bin a 1 and bin a 2 correct. So, in the grid structure also if you visualize this it will look something like this say w is seen somewhere here and y is seen somewhere here, but they are actually they are belongs to two different bins though they look as like they are adjacent to each other, but they are in two different uh, bins ok. So, if you look at this is only one portion. So, if you look at the entire chip the total interconnects like if it is a single bisection also it will appear to be something like this. If I want to apply you know the min cut I have to eliminate so many interconnects being cut then it may appear something like this ok. So, compared to C this is the better picture. So, it is uh, uh, something like iterative type you can say it is a constructive algorithm, but one type of you know partitioning process is applied then after that I can apply another type and I can uh, try to improve that is possible. So, when it is uh, an iterative algorithm there are many types of iterative algorithms, 
but uh, I am just looking at very few of them because in your uh, prescribed uh, you know reference book uh, it is according to your syllabus this is uh, given a focus the force direct you know placement it is like over the time the placement will improve the force di uh, director placement is a very has got a very beautiful analogy okay it's based on the force force is related to a distance so for example you have a block here and the block here say this block let me call as 1 and this is 2 block block number 2 and you have a block number 3 here you connect one there is a connection between 1 and 3 and there is a connection between 1 and 2 as well okay when you are connecting imagine that you are connecting them through a spring you are connecting them through a spring now if under this condition between 1 and 2 in the spring you will have more force the tension will be more because 2 is placed far away from 1 between 1 and 3 there won't be much force because they are placed close to each other compared to 2 so when they are far away placed when the tension is more or force exerted is more bring them close when you try to bring them close what will happen two has to be moved somewhere here that time what will happen you are actually trying to reduce the wire length okay so now how this movement should happen that will be followed under various process you will have force direct uh, directed interchange you will have force directed relaxation force directed pair wise relaxation etc but the analogy is like imagine the interconnect blocks are connected through a spring see uh, the first example it is a swapping like 1 and 13 that will be swapped based on you know there is a uh, interconnect so force is more you just swap okay uh, sorry uh, force is uh, there is no uh, force with the sorry 13 sorry do cut okay so in the first example if you see it is just uh, you know pairwise interchange i'm reiteratively changing the location of the block so that you know uh, there uh, there sh uh, there should not be uh, <laughs> time is right ready martin al naale ge one hour anta illinle first start madbeku sir if you look at this uh, example the first one swapping of source logic with the destination it is a pairwise interchange so i am i am randomly choosing a pair or i can mathematically also choose a pair by the calculation like there is one uh, famous algorithm called uh, you know kl usually used for partitioning that will decide based on the number of interconnects uh, based on the calculation of you know maximum possibility if you move or a swap a pair of vertices what is the reduction in the total number of interconnects being cut the similar analogy i can apply here when you pair wise swap start swapping the overall you know wire length is getting you know decreased so it is a randomized uh, pair selection based on which you can try to swap or you can even have a mathematical model how to choose a pair okay the second one is a swapping between like multiple uh, you know uh, multiple uh, cells like you swap the location of 3 with 1 1 with 11 1 11 uh, with 3 again all this you can do then you can have uh, swap only have a swap between you know it's not randomized swap between neighboring cells 5 and 2 multiple neighbors can also be swapped together that is called a coming under you know group migrations instead of one single pair swapping it is in group we are swapping so it is kind of like group migration in 
the force directed placement the previous slide was about the pairwise flapping the in the force uh, directed placement look at this a and i they have more interconnects okay and it has got an interconnect but it is placed far away the spring if i place i have actually two springs so force is even more i have to bring a closer to i i have to shift the location of a closer to i that time you know the other block it should actually change the location say if i want to move i to close to a that means one of the block should be moved that i should be take care of so the force directed placement will work on the force equation so how to calculate that force x of i ij is a variable we call it as a distance okay it is calculated based on euclidean distance between i and the jth block i mean cell in the x direction similarly i can write force equation in the y direction also and cij is the connectivity matrix so i mean how 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 many uh, you know interconnects are connected between i to block and the jth block so that will be represented in terms of a matrix so cij represents that so force directed improvement let us see the very first one the swapping the swap p with the nearest neighbor in the direction of the vector so you have to uh, look at the uh, you know uh, the force between the neighbors then you try to swap them then second one is the moving uh, force directed relaxation where this is exactly the spring one you are moving the positioning from p to f so you just move the position of p to f f somewhere else and it will continuously repeated and the last one is force directed pairwise relaxation is based on the force you try to you know uh, try to exchange them in a pair here only the movement one at a time here in the pair movement is in terms of a pair based on the spring action another add, adding to the placement uh, you have a uh, uh, procedure called as this is completely a probabilistic procedure this procedure is called as placement using simulated annealing process you would have uh, learnt the annealing process in school days like annealing is uh, how uh, you know uh, the metal is heated to a maximum temperature and cooled slowly until uh, you know a required uh, structure is uh, obtained there is a process of cooling it like heating it up to the maximum temperature and you try to cool it down that analogy we say is like you have initial randomized state that means what heating a metal to a maximum temperature means under molten state its completely molecules are com completely randomized right so it is a random solution you try to cool it one by one so with respect to metal it is attaining some structure slowly so with respect to vlsi or this uh, placement initial random uh, placement you will have we will slowly uh, start getting a better and better uh, placements in the, uh, over the iterations so how it operates i'll begin the algorithm i'll take it as a temperature temperature need it's a, just a cost function okay it's a, not a temperature that you heat the chip to the maximum temperature it's what is the maximum value how much random it could be um, i mean it's a basically a cost function say you have a placement and if you are estimating cost function either you can estimate with respect to the area or you can estimate with respect to the wire length okay So how it uh, is done? Say this is one block, another block. You have seen the force directed placement where you try to exchange based on the force. So now I try to exchange. I randomly choose two. If exchange, say these two are having two connections. 
if I try to exchange them, what will happen between these two area? Two will be retained. So exchange is not gaining anything. Correct. So now, say this is block one and block two. Then I have another block three. Okay. If I exchange between one and two, no gain. If I exchange between one and three. then what will happen i can actually eliminate these two uh, you know interconnects uh, uh, they are outside the block area right i mean between two bins two are two are there but i could move one to one to, uh, bin i mean cell number 1 to bin 2 then what will happen at 3 uh, will be moved to bin number 1 what will happen there is no interconnection between bin number 1 and bin number two, or bin number a and b kind of thing okay so that is the advantage of this type of algorithm so initially like you will set a temperature that's the initial cost function how much it is randomized like you will have multiple interconnects then that is what you say so far i have the better solution is that one that is the initial placement then i can fix how many iterations i have to run because it's a iterative based there should be some stopping criteria like when i have to stop the number of iterations i can predefine that what i can do is like i can obtain a new placement just by altering the original placement that alteration i call as a perturb i am just perturbing the original placement then i'll try to estimate the cost function that means whether there is improvement in area could be one cost function if not is there any improvement with respect to wire length second cost function or is there any improvement with respect to number of interconnects being cut between the uh, you know uh, bins there could be another uh, you know cost function this i'll check if it is in a positive way directly accept you have updated if it is in a negative way there is no improvement or it is even more deteriorating if i accept uh, such you know replacement but still i'll run have some probability it's not like direct reject the probability says maybe for the current iteration it is not give, uh, giving me uh, the better solution with respect to that solution the next iteration if i run it might give so thinking of that we try to accept the solution that is that's why we say it's completely randomized so this type of algorithms can also be developed uh, for uh, placement uh, students uh, let me stop this class here now let us continue uh, the topic on uh, you know placement in the coming upcoming class and we'll uh, brush through uh, the routing there are uh, varieties of routing that and all we'll see in the next class thank you so much